For consultants, coaches and other solo practitioners, one of the most important things to figure out once you start up your own business, how to earn back your previous salary. And in this episode, I'm sharing the only three systems you really need to achieve that milestone. Why six figures? Well, for an independent service provider, six figures has always seemed the milestone to hit. Come find out why and how to hit it. Welcome to the Leverage Business Podcast, where we believe business success is about working smarter, not harder. Leveraging your time and expertise in ways that fit the digital age you and your clients live in today. I'm your host, Jay Allison, author of Leverage Consulting in the Digital Age and founder of the iSuccess Business Academy. And every week I'll be sharing insights into how you can apply the power of leverage to grow your consulting, coaching or other expert services business and create true freedom and independent success with mindset, marketing and money model breakthroughs. Because when you get leveraged, the sky's the limit. Let's go for it. Hello everyone, so good to have you back. I love seeing the downloads and getting your emails. It tells me we're doing valuable work with the podcast, so thank you for being here. Before we kick off with today's topic, I just want to make sure that you know about the Facebook group, because to be honest, I haven't really driven it too much, and I think we're missing a trick to take these topics deeper. So if joining a group of like-minded people is appealing, championing the pursuit of true independence and freedom from your business, achieving life success on your own terms, then hop over to Facebook groups and search for The Leveraged Living Club or just pop it in your browser. So today we're talking about hitting that six-figure mark in your business. and I'm answering a lot of the common questions I get from people looking to start up or achieve growth. The only three systems you need to achieve a six-figure business is a bold title, I know. And it runs the risk of attracting those get rich quick types. But for consultants and coaches, especially starting out, it's a really great way to focus the mind on the right things in your business, because it's pretty much the type of salary that you're likely to have attracted in a corporate job. Because there really are only three systems you need to start leveraging your most critical business processes that help you get more clients, increase your revenue and help a lot of people you serve in the process. So let's start by looking at why achieving a six-figure revenue is a key business milestone. So why six figures? Why does everyone talk about building a six-figure business? For an independent service provider, six figures has always seemed the milestone to hit. It's a kind of a holy grail of like you've made it when you've got to that six-figure mark. But $100 is actually just around £70,000, and it's about the salary of a consultant employed in a small consulting firm. Possibly coaches uh, would attract a little bit less. Now, some of you may start up on your own part-time while you build up to your previous salary, but others may quit the corporate life and feel quite under pressure to make money fast. Not just a few hundred every now and then, or a couple of thousand here and there, but to achieve a six-figure revenue consistently. And when you build your own business and hit six figures, it really does feel like you've hit independence when you can replace that corporate salary. So it's a good milestone to reach. Now, if you're already there, then I will talk a little bit about um, reaching the next mark, which is multiple six figures and seven figures. But it's actually really important that we also look at the consistency, that we look at what's happening on a month by month basis. So If you're actually starting from scratch, you may take a year or two to hit six figures. I mean, it can happen really fast, depending on what what you're actually bringing to the table when you come in with your own business and how much time that you want to spend on it. So, so for example, if you are still working uh, a full time job whilst building it up, it's going to go a little bit more slowly. So, I mean, we're talking about consistency, really, about making an average monthly revenue of seven to ten thousand dollars. Now, let's do the maths. And for this purpose, it doesn't matter if you want to count in dollars, pounds or euros or something else. If you're charging around, say, 5K for a project, you only really have to do one to two projects a month and you're going to hit that six figures. Can you find one to two clients every single month? So here's the thing, that first milestone is often reached by working one-to-one with each client. It gives you the legitimacy, it gives you the practice, it allows you to develop your process. It allows you to put lots of other things in place rather than having to create a whole system all in one go. 
But then what? You know, once you've hit the income ceiling, you'll need to do something differently to increase it. So you look at pricing or scaling models, and we've talked a lot about those in past episodes. You can charge more, you can build a team, you can free up some time with outsourcing admin or tech tasks, you can create systems, and you can use automation tools. And any or all of those changes are going to give you a little extra capacity to do the client work. But you still are going to hit a ceiling at some point because there's only one of you, right? So say you decide that you want to work with clients in a group program model. And I've talked a lot about group programs in earlier episodes. And so you'd need basically to enroll 10 people who pay you 1K a month or 20 people at $500, say, a month every month on average in order to hit your six figures. So you might build up to that. You might not run something every single month, but that's really where you're playing around with the numbers to think, you know, what's the life you want to lead? You know, how many programs do you want going at any one time? How many people do you want to serve in any one program? How how does that affect their experience? How does that affect how deep you're able to go with each person? Um, and that then in turn, of course, means about the the program outcomes is is it's all kind of in the blend of program design so say you have a three-month program and you charge 500 a month for that and it would give you some retention as well because that gives you and somebody signs up for a three-month program that gives you three months automatically and possibly they could renew for another three months but there's a cycle right so you've got to enroll a new group every quarter now do you have a marketing machine in place to roll in those numbers every month so when we talk about the three systems, uh, which I'll, I'll go into in a moment, it's really important to know that what we're trying to do here is to put systems in place which give you, um, the, that give you efficiency, that are effective, but also give you efficiency. Because what you want to do is avoid a 60 plus hour work week, right? So, you know, when you hear some people talk about achieving that mystical six figure business, it's really sometimes an exercise in frustration and futility for many of them. They're they're the folks that are working 60 plus hours a week or more, and they're struggling also with less than ideal clients. So it feels really stressful and they quickly lose motivation and just keeping on the treadmill, just keeping everything going. And starting a business and getting that all important momentum going, acquiring clients, finding your process for working with them, it all does take time. That's fair to say. And it takes a little bit of hustling. And now there's two types of meanings in the word hustle. So what I don't mean is the slang term, the bad type, where you're earning your living by illicit or unethical means. No, there's an original meaning of hustle, which is to proceed or work rapidly or energetically. The kind of uh, I want, uh, I better get a wiggle on kind of meaning, right? I better hustle. I better push myself. I better be assertive. So That's the kind of hustle that we're talking about in the beginning. But once you get things moving, it should be a lot more sort of ease and grace to the whole process. When you focus on the things that are really important, then that's where the magic happens. Okay, so let's clear a few things up about what are the best things to hustle yourself over. Um, It's the things that bring in clients, right? Income producing activity. So what are the right things to focus on? To achieve six figures in revenue in your business, you want to make sure you're not busying yourself on the things that don't lead to income. Part of the answer to this is mindset. You want to spend a little time focused on developing a results-driven mindset and create daily success habits for yourself. For instance, we talked last week about empowerment for entrepreneurship and touched on this. It's not always about pushing or forcing things to happen, although I'll come on to that in a minute. It's a lot about finding productivity techniques that work best for you and developing self-care habits that will make you feel unstoppable. However, what I see a lot of entrepreneurs doing is hustling in a rather unproductive way, especially online. You'll often hear people exclaim they're exhausted or overwhelmed or going around in circles. And I also pick out specific things that they say, like, if only I could find the right clients, if only I could keep my clients for more than a month or two. If only I could find a way to stop trading hours for dollars. And the truth is, these if onlys would make all the difference in their business. If only they knew how to achieve them. (laughs) The fact is, though, you can find the right clients, keep them happily paying for months or years and even dramatically reduce the number of hours you work without lowering your revenue. 
What's needed is a simple proven system that works to fill your pipeline, your sales funnel, and keep the leads, clients and money coming in predictably, dependably and consistently. Sound too easy? While it's proven to work and easy to set up, it can be confusing to make all the pieces fit together seamlessly. Let's take a look at them one at a time. So we're going to go over what systems you need to get clients and earn revenue. Now, I often talk about client flow as involving a kind of dating analogy, a process map, if you like, and I call it client dating. It means wooing your prospective client, getting to know each other, building the connection before you ask them to take a more serious commitment together. OK, so you're not going to propose marriage, obviously, but you are going to ask them to work with you, to hire you or to enroll on your program. And if your price point is at the high end, that's a big step for your prospect. So you need a process by which they can get to know, like and trust you. And I call this the success pathway of engage, educate, enroll. And they map beautifully onto our leveraged business flywheel. That's on the front cover of my book, Leverage Consulting in the Digital Age. If you haven't grabbed a copy yet, it's on Amazon. So here are the three steps you need to create a system to get a consistent flow of engaged prospects or leads and turn them into paying customers or clients. Number one, you have to discover the fit. So you need an attraction system. Before your first client can pay you, they have to know who you are and what you do. They need to see you as the right fit for them. What you're all about, what you do, what you offer, it has to resonate with them both personally and in terms of what they want to achieve. In my book, I talk about becoming distinctive and slightly famous. And that's a lot about letting your personality shine through your brand, your content, your communication with people. I just commented on a post, in fact, in LinkedIn, where someone was saying the whole unique value proposition is unnecessary and people should not try to manufacture uniqueness. I disagree that unique value isn't important in your marketing, but I had to agree with not forcing a distinctiveness for the sake of it. So let your uniqueness shine through by being purposeful and authentic in who you are and how you show up. Discovery can happen in a dozen different ways. So it's just a matter of choosing the best medium and method for you and your ideal client. Number two is to nurture the connection. So you need a relationship system. Once your perfect person has found you, they're unlikely to hire you or sign up on first contact. That would be a bit like getting married on the first date. It's possible, but it rarely goes well or lasts long. To have a successful marriage, you need to have built a relationship, right? The same is true in business. It takes a bit of romancing and resonating. But again, there's many, many ways that you can nurture the relationship with your future client. But copywriting, storytelling and consistent effort are pretty key to all of them. And number three is to make the offer. So you need a sales system. That's the final piece of the six figure puzzle is to make the offer and close the sale. As with the other two steps or systems, this can happen in a variety of ways. An ideal sales system depends on what's gone before the engage, educate and enroll processes. So if you're having trouble closing the sale or getting people to sign up, you should check back if each step is working harmoniously, synergistically and seamlessly to present the right offer to the right people at the right time. How you seal the deal and close the sale, whether it's a buy now button or a sales page after a webinar or on the phone, that's going to really depend on your offer, your price point and the time frame for nurturing. So another question I get quite often is how do I set up the right sequence for launching my offer? Now, these three systems are all you need in place to attract visitors or traffic and turn them into good quality leads and clients and to do that consistently. When you focus on getting good at converting traffic into leads and converting leads into clients, this becomes a turnkey system for your business. What I notice, though, is a lot of people are doing just so many different things and they're losing track of what's actually working. Now, the three step sequence, the systems that I've talked about is very closely related to the sequence you need to launch an offer too. In fact, the first time you run a campaign through this three system funnel, you're essentially launching. You can generate a constant stream of prospects or you can create a launch style sequence. The steps are the same. What's different is whether or not you're driving warm traffic through outreach to an existing list or you're actually working through cold traffic. Because again, the nurturing time frame needs to be very different. 
The difference with a big launch is there's more buzz and in some cases more hype. And you may have a whole series of events and giveaways and prizes. You may have partners involved or you may have a big affiliate system that amplifies everything. Now, you sometimes hear people say they did a six figure launch, which means they set everything up and made over $100,000 in one go. So it's really a different thing that more established businesses can do. But starting out, it's more a matter of getting the funnel, the sequence of pieces into play. And you'll want to test it converts before you send too much traffic through it or use paid ads to drive it faster. Anyway, the question of how do I set up the right sequence for launching my offer came up the other week. I was running a mini mastermind and a lot of people in the group raised the question of the best sequence for getting clients. That it was all a bit of confusion and overwhelming and pretty daunting. Well, if that's you too, then I totally hear you because people get a tad overwhelmed by all the different pieces that marketers seem to be using across the sales funnel, all the different options. How do I find the right people? What emails should I be sending? Should I run a webinar? Is it a membership the right way to go? Thinking about these three steps and putting just three systems in place, that's your attraction system, your relationship system and your sales system is definitely the best way to solve the puzzle of sequencing. What gets complicated is when you build out the funnel and start adding pieces to it. So you need to build it up slowly so that you remain in control and you're tracking everything. So another question I get is how do I identify what are the best systems for me, for my business? And the way I address this question is to get my clients to think about each step in turn. The goal is that for each one, you first decide what's the one thing that you can put in place most easily and quickly to get something up and running. You can always refine it, tweak it, replace it later. But what's the fastest way that you can actually reach people if it was the attraction side? What's the best medium for you to nurture the relationship? Is it email? Is it through um, a Facebook group? And what's the best way to close the sale? Is it by um, creating a really, really compelling sales page or is it by getting people on the phone? Let me summarize here and then next week I'm going to go through a whole list of methods to give you some more detailed examples that you can kind of think which one would suit you. But have a think about it for now, just in a broad sense. So for an attraction system, you can ask yourself, what would be your best method to attract people to work with you? Pick one that plays to your strength. Is that writing, teaching, speaking? Do you shine most on video, audio or the written word? Do you prefer solo or group settings? For the relationship system, it's more about the platform. Do you want to focus on a series of emails to nurture your connection or leads and get really good at finding your voice in the way that you speak to people? I've certainly improved immensely the kind of uh, things that I say in my emails. I used to start off really, really formal thinking that, you know, it's, it's written it's it's written stuff. So it has to be kind of professional and, and solid. Um, but actually, when you find your voice a little bit more, then you really want to just be friendly and just be yourself. Um, and as Laura McDowell, um, my lovely copywriting uh, guru, says, you have to write how you speak. So for your relationship system, maybe you want to run webinars or start a YouTube channel, maybe a podcast or to start, pe start off maybe podcast guesting. So by all means, drop me a note if you want to be a guest on my show and there's an application process and we can have a chat um, and just see, you know, whether it serves us both. Um, so that maybe that's a, a place to start. Now, perhaps you can speak at some key events. Maybe you're already networked in, in groups or you're part of a professional association. So, you know, where is it that your best clients hang out? Where are you likely to um, to meet them? Now, perhaps you need to try a few things out first because you, you know, your audience hangs out in all kinds of different places. But once you've done that little bit of research, decide on one particular platform so that you don't spread yourself too thin. And then for the third system, the sales system, that's a little bit more nuanced. But really, I think what you need to think about is what you're selling. You know, if it's a low end priced product, then or service um, or you could just be, be asking people to pay for a month's membership, you could just have a sales page and then have a join now or a buy now button. But if it's higher priced, like a lot of um, high-end 
consulting, coaching type programs are, then you're probably going to want to drive your prospects to an enrollment call. So that would be your call to action, especially if you want to be selective as well about who you work with and then check that it's a fit on both sides. So we want to do a deeper dive on the three systems and methods um, so that you get a little bit more chance to think about what would suit you, what are people doing, what's working. So hopefully what I've done so far today will start the ball rolling for your three systems and what might work best for you. And, you know, remember to start with picking just one thing and lean into that. Do it consistently, show up there regularly and track how it's working. And then next week, I'm going to go through each three of the three systems again, talking through some of the methods and giving you some examples. Bear in mind, though, as I said, it's important to choose a method that's really going to suit you personally, so you suit your personality, so you actually enjoy your time in that space, um, as well as it suiting your intended target market, because that's the way that you're going to show up. That's the way you're going to be doing this consistently. So if you'd like to connect up with me, if you've got further questions, there's a submit question, uh, submit a question box on the podcast site at jallison.com forward slash podcast. And you can write it in or you can speak it. Uh, So just go on, be courageous and get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. So until next week, have a super rest of your day and a lovely weekend. Ciao, ciao for now. Thank you for listening to the Leverage Business Podcast. Want to create leverage in your business? Did this episode provide some insights and ideas to be thinking through? If so, subscribe so you get alerts when the next one's released. If you want to learn more or would like help and support with building a leveraged business that achieves true freedom for you, then head over to jallison.com forward slash podcast to find all the resources and links that go with this show on my website and to join our iSuccess community. And if you're enjoying our content, it would be great if you could pop into Apple Podcasts or the app you listen from and leave me a rating and review. Everyone makes a difference to improving our rankings. So thank you if you've done that already. I appreciate you. So, hey, that's it. Thank you for listening. I hope you've loved this episode and have some great takeaways to be thinking through. I wish you a pleasant, productive and profitable week. And I'll see you again next time for another episode of the Leverage Business Podcast.